Hi, I'm Claire, the survey organiser for the two citizen science surveys in the Bats and Churches project, the National Bats and Churches Study and Church Bat Detectives. I hope you really enjoy taking part. There are 16,000 C of E churches across England. And inside these churches are nooks and crannies perfect for bats to roost in. That might be behind the timber, the roof and eave voids behind the wall hangings. And outside the church, under the lead flashing and the tiles, are also good areas for bats to roost. Some churches might have small numbers of bats and they go unnoticed most of the time. But we know that some churches are home to maternity roosts containing several hundred bats. But churches can be used throughout the year as hibernation sites as well. And we've recorded bats hibernating in cold areas of the church, particularly the crypts and the towers. We know that bats can make good use of churches, but we don't really know how important churches are on a national scale for our bats. But you can help us find out and bridge this knowledge gap. So these surveys will help us explore questions like how many churches have bat roosts in the summer? What are the factors that affect bats' use of churches? And importantly, what are the perspectives of the people that are living with bats in their churches? Those people that are cleaning up uh, the droppings that they leave behind. Once you've selected your church, the first thing to do is to get in contact with a church representative and arrange a time to visit. In your confirmation email, you'll have a link to a church near you website, which will take you to their contact information. And you'll find a template email and letter in the online resources pages. For ease and so that they are prepared, it will be useful to send the questionnaire by email ahead of time. If they would like a copy posted to them, please do get in touch and we'll post one out. The issue of bats and churches is a sensitive one. The representatives of your chosen church may not want to take part and might decline to meet you. If this does happen, please don't take it personally. We do, however, need to know. And you can record this on your My Churches pages under Church Details. If this does happen, please don't be disheartened. You can select another church. On the day, you'll need your survey forms, the questionnaire and the bat evidence survey form, a pen, a camera, and if you're doing the National Bats and Churches study, you'll need some other equipment too, and this is discussed in a separate video. It's optional, but binoculars and a torch can help when doing the bat evidence survey. And remember to wear good, sturdy footwear. The survey is in two parts, a questionnaire with the representative or representatives of the church, and a bat evidence survey, and you could do them in either order. When starting the questionnaire, it's good to make a note of the time because you'll be asked how long it takes you to work through the questionnaire document. The questionnaire is designed to be thorough and it could take up to an hour to go through. Although, if the church representative isn't aware of bats using the church, it will be a lot quicker. Church representatives may have a strong view about the topic of bats in churches and it's good to be prepared for this, to be understanding and to record their perspectives even if you don't agree with them yourself. The next part is the bat evidence survey. But before you begin, we're asking you to take four photos of the outside of the church from the four corners, the southeast, southwest, northwest and northeast. Then take two photos from the inside of the church. Stand in the chancel and take the photos towards the body of the church. Take one of the main interior of the church and another pointed directly towards the ceiling. These photos will provide us with better contextual information about the church and potentially help in future bat roost visits. During the bat evidence survey, look for any signs of bats within the church, particularly droppings. Also look out for urine stains like these ones. Bat droppings can accumulate underneath the roost and below access points. Scatter droppings can also be left behind when bats are flying in the nave and aisles. So look out for droppings on the walls and on the floor, particularly around the corners and the edge that's difficult to clean. Have a look at the ledges, if they're easy to access and easily visible. Look around the door frame and below wall hangings, but also on the pews. 
If you find evidence of bats in the church, you'll be asked to provide the type of evidence, for example droppings, and also to record whereabouts it is in the church, and a photo if you can do it. If it is droppings, you'll be asked to record approximately how many there are, for example below 10, below 100, 100 plus. If there are multiple areas where you can see accumulations of droppings, then we're going to ask you to record all of them. But remember, if you don't find any evidence, that's useful information too, so please do still enter the information online. When carrying out the crumble test, we recommend that you wear gloves or use a tissue, and remember to wash your hands after. The church representatives may ask you questions about bats that you're unsure about. Don't worry, we don't expect you to have all the answers. We'll provide you with contact details to give to the church representative or representatives. For church bat detectives, we'll send this out with your survey pack, along with the printed forms. For those doing the National Bats and Churches study, this will arrive with your equipment kit. If you're doing the National Bats and Churches study, then we aim to identify the bats to species level, and we're doing this using a static detector and DNA analysis. For those of you doing church bat detectives, we won't have this, but if you already know the site and the species present, or you may have your own bat detector and you want to go out and identify the bats, then you will be able to enter this species information on the online database, but this is optional. But whether you're doing the National Bats and Churches study or church bat detectives, if you do find a bat roost and you enjoy surveying, why not continue to record for the National Bat Monitoring Programme and continue doing the roost count? This can provide us with long-term records of bats and bat numbers within these churches. Please stay safe while you're surveying. Our safety guidance is in your resources information, so please do read it. Importantly, it's always recommended to go with another person. And we ask that you don't go into the tower or climb any ladders to find evidence of bats. I hope that you found this video useful, but if you did want more information, there's more resources online on the website. But most importantly, have fun doing the survey and good luck.